talking about building hot rods here. I'm not talking about sugarcoating. We're talking about everything. Knuckle busting. The rust in your fucking eyes. We're talking about building fucking hot rods. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's All About the Build podcast. Today, you got me, Elliot Slack, and as always, here to the left is... Randy Bunting. What's up? Randy's in the house. I'm in the house. The cats are in the house. So if you hear some hooting and hollering and all that jazz, it's just the cats in the background doing their thing. Meow. And the occasional beautiful wife of mine. What is this? Ooh, we got parts. (laughs) Haha, we have parts. Parts are in the house. Thanks to Amazon. It's Christmas. Shout out to Amazon. We have a sensor. It is a sensor. We have a sensor. Randy misplaced it the other day. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just joking. No, he's not joking. I, I misplaced it. Yeah. So I had to take a hit on that one. It happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But today, today we are going to be discussing award-winning hot rods. We're going to branch off the subjects we've been getting into the last couple episodes and kind of going a, a different route with things. And I guess we're going to talk about kind of what it takes to build award-winning hot rods and kind of like certain different, like different levels of of hot rods i guess the top tier i guess we're going to talk about yeah we're not going to go into detail on like restoration style we're talking hot rod building we're talking about custom cars today so if you cringe at the word custom you're one of them yay who's <laughs> that are all about restorations you know this isn't for you you know the the has to be original thing Today is not your topic, but you might actually learn something because at the end of the day, if you want an award-winning car, whether or not it is restoration or not, a lot of this is going to be a factor, but we're not talking about 100-point cars here. We're not talking about the the blue bonnet or whatever the fuck it is that needs to be some serious precision. We're talking about winning custom car awards, and for those of you that don't know, don't follow along on the Facebook page. We uh, dove into a little bit of Randy whenever he first got involved with the company and came out to Indiana. For those of you that don't know, Randy Bunning helped build one of the greatest custom car award winning vehicles in North America, which is the Randy Don Riddler Award. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been living under a rock and don't know what the Don Riddler Award is, thank God you've tuned into this episode because... I do know people that don't know what the Riddler Award is. So that's what it's called, the Riddler Award. Um, more specifically, the Don Riddler Award. And that award is in Detroit Autorama uh, every February. Yeah, every February since what, 64? 64, I think, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Don Riddler um, actually uh, passed away, unfortunately, and uh, uh, rather quickly at like 50, 52, 54, Something like that. 56. It was 1963. Yeah. And he had such a, he was so involved with the Autorama, he actually helped build Autorama to what it is today. Right. Um, For those of you that don't know about Don Riddler or the history of Don Riddler, he actually was from Michigan or his schooling where he basically started everything. Went to Michigan State. Michigan State. And he was on, he ended up on the Hall of Fame there. Yeah. The, the, what is it? The Michigan Sports Hall of Fame or something like that? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but, but yes. Right. Um, he was actually, uh, he coached basketball. Yeah. He did a lot, uh, for the Michigan sports, yeah. Um, scene. Yeah. He coached basketball and then he was part of, um, helping them basically bring people, to the show and after 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 the games and stuff like that he was part of the whole spiel yeah um, bringing music and stuff like that and auto rama reached out to him this was whenever they were at what the fairgrounds or something in michigan something yeah. like that mm-hmm. and wanted to try to build auto rama what it is today and if it wasn't for don riddler they probably wouldn't have got there as quickly if it wasn't for don riddler i don't, I don't think auto rama would be what it is today there's a reason why they named the award after him after he passed away yeah um, creativity, excellence, quality, quality, engineering, fit and finish, you know, the, the whole elegance of the, of the car, that's what the Riddler award is about. Yeah. And in order to do it, um, if you're not familiar, a lot of these vehicles are millions of dollars worth of nowadays, time and effort. Yeah, it's usually yeah. millions of dollars nowadays. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to work 
uh, side by side with a, a builder that that nailed. Uh, he was part of the grade eight, and his vehicle actually wasn't anywhere near millions and millions of dollars. You can get there without spending a million dollars. You can do it. Um, you just you have to build it in a certain way. Yeah, I believe a lot of it had to do with just his price tag, his hourly rate. Right. You know, a lot of it has to do with the hourly rate. If you're at 120 bucks an hour, you know, at 100 bucks an hour, you're looking at what 44 grand every every 40 hours. Yeah, and it, it also depends on whether or not you're doing it yourself or doing it with like a a home team rather than having a shop do it. Right. Most of the builds are usually personal owners that have helpers or shops help them. I don't think there's many actual shops that one won the Riddler. Uh, if you know what I'm, if you know what I mean, I think so. I mean, I know. Well, I mean, let's face it. A lot of shops aren't. I've I've heard of shops having to buy in, basically put their own money into ha- like they get halfway into the build and they're half a million dollars in, and they it's the guy's out of money and the owner is, but they still want to see this. You know, the whole point of the car was a Riddler Award, or at least to try to get to a grade eight, and they have to they have to pony up to get it finished so they put their own time and effort and money into it so i've seen co-owners of award winners which were part owners were the shop if that's if that's what we're getting at randy yeah but part of this award the vehicle cannot be shown anywhere at any time this has to be the first time it's ever being seen there can't be any any of the finished product out in the universe before the actual show before thursday the thursday night of when the show starts in Detroit. Yeah, w- once you get there and show the car in front of the judges, then after that, you know, they can't control whether or not people take fit pictures of it. So it's after, after once it gets there and gets off the trailer and in front of the judges, then yeah, until that point, it's in total secret. You can't let any pictures get out, any videos get out. You have to, for s- certain shops, they have certain rooms. They have special rooms for that kind of stuff, secret rooms. Yeah, they either have like literally walls, or it's in a it's its own little paint booth system. Yeah, and, and or whatever. sometimes sometimes not even the people who work there get to go in there. Some you know it's it's crazy. Yeah, I know of uh, I can think of one right off the top of my head, but I'm not going to discuss it because it's a Riddler builder being yeah. built right now. As uh, being built right now. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's 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 actually uh, on the telly. It's on the old TV, and they have it all screened off and and the whole nine yards and. They got to make sure that the recording production company can't, you know, doesn't grab a hold of that one. Yeah, right. So there's a lot of top secret shit, 007 but, stuff. But even the even the TV crews, they know what that's about. You know, I'm sure they have that stuff. Well, I'm sure they're recording it right now. I mean, what better? Oh, definitely. They're they're recording it right. There's they probably have a separate team for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine uh, having a recording, you know, like having a big time company, big time name car builder, and the TV crews there. And they have the opportunity to record a Riddler Award. Possibly, they're probably, they're probably doing a documentary kind of series about it. Yeah, which is awesome. I hope it. I hope it wins, and I hope it goes through everything, and I hope it gets on the national stage like that, so people can learn about this shit more. Right. Yeah. I mean, not gonna lie. Before I even got in the hot rod scene, I didn't even know what the Riddler Award. was. I had no fucking clue what the Riddler Award was. Yeah. I mean, I. I I've never been to Detroit before working where I work, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'd never been either. You know, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to travel with the first company that I worked with. Um, that was the one thing that I liked about that company was they actually wanted to, well, they were selective about who they were bringing along, but they gave me an opportunity to travel with them to all sorts of shows. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's 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 probably one of my favorite things about what we do. Is, is getting to travel to different cities and look at what other other shops are doing. It, it keeps you updated with everything. Yeah. Speaking with other builders is, is, is pretty sweet. And But the funny thing is, even even the big-time awards, even the big-time awards, don't you don't get the justification just being a part of the shop. It's always right. the name on the side of the building or it doesn't even have, I know, a lot of descriptions and everything like that following the build that you were a part of. You know, they they didn't even say where it was from. I mean, a lot of articles said that it was from New Jersey, <laughs> but that was where the owner owner yeah. was from. Mm-hmm. And it's that's that's the one thing about the Riddler Award. Even if a shop builds it, it's, it's about, it's about the, it's mostly about the customer. Yeah. It's about the, it's about the owner it's it's all about it's all about them 
uh, it's definitely not all about the build. It, right. <laughs> you know, it is about the build. Definitely. It's just, you know, the, the people who build it or the shop that builds it, they definitely take a, a seat back on that stage. Uh, they definitely get the recognition. It's just mostly about the, you know, it's about them. It's their deal. You know, they, they, <laughs> they spent the money, they spent the time and effort to make it happen besides the shop that did it. Um, it's, I think it's mostly about them. You know what the funny thing is when I do, when I do research on other shops and stuff like that, when I was starting to build IBF hot rods and trying to figure out what route to go as far as like just building a website and stuff like that, I went out to some big names and I went down the Riddler award winners and stuff like that. And the craziest part about the Riddler award and shops, they you even grade eight awards. They don't, if I was like, Basically, whenever IBF Hot Rods hits that fucking stage in life. When? Yeah, when it does. Because <laughs> I'm putting it in the universe, man. I've put it in the universe for years. This is the fucking way it's going to go. Everybody's going to know we were part of that shit, period. Yeah, right. If you no, go to my website, I that's going to be the first thing on top. Don't get me wrong. Like the, like, like I said, the shop does get a lot of rec- recognition for that. Uh, the shop or the builder, whoever it is. Um but if you're not doing your due diligence, you ain't going to get the fucking credit for it. Right. Yeah. That's like, I know what you mean. Uh, but when you're up there on the stage, you know, that the judges don't want the judges in the autorama scene. They don't really want a lot of, you know, your name out there right in the display or whatever. It's, it's, it's all about just being everything clean, everything, everything has to be a, a certain way, a, a certain display about it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm trying to think of it. Word well, I mean, word. it's all, I mean, at that point, I guess it is all about the build. It's all about the car at that point in time. And they don't want any clutter. How about clutter? That? Yeah. They don't want clutter. They don't want, you know, names popping out everywhere and, and different displays popping out everywhere. Like that, you know, it's, <clears throat> you look at a lot of cars, go to a lot of car shows. They have like little signs on the floor, you know, it was chromed here or, or d- interior work was done there. You know, they usually don't want that kind of stuff, you know, popping out everywhere and, as far as the name of the builder goes, you know, it's the name's going to be in there somewhere. You'll find it. It's just going to be really small usually, and uh, it's more about the car and the and the owner of the car. It's more more about them. But yeah, yeah, you can if you do it right, you can get people. Will, people will know no matter what. You know who built this car. If you get it onto the grade eight stage or even the Riddler stage, I don't want. I I want somebody that doesn't know what the fuck the Riddler Award is to stumble upon our website. And right. See, like it's boom right in your face. Grade yeah. eight award, Riddler award. It could happen, and and you're it's right in your face, and you have no choice but to be like, oh, what's this? Holding a fucking check for ten G's, man, <laughs> in front of the car. This is what yeah. we've done. This is what you're getting yourself into. Yep. This is what we're about. We're about winning awards. That gets me know? excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Right. And that's why we're talking about this because I was I'm fucking tired of talk. I mean, I'm not tired of talking about other stuff, but. I want to. This is this episode's for us. Is what right. It is. Yeah. This is, we're patting ourselves on the back, as people might say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is fine. You know. <laughs> totally fine. I'm totally fine with that. If That's I'm not, I'm like, why wouldn't you pat yourself on the back? If you've done some shit, do it. Like. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did I? Yeah. My bad. My resume's built like this. I didn't mean <laughs> to help you win an award. <laughs> right. You know. My bad. Yeah. Heaven forbid. <laughs> I asked for a touch of credit yeah. or not even credit, just like. Hey, you know, Randy was involved. I mean, looking back, I feel like I got a decent amount of credit for what I did. Um, I got to mingle with, I mean, a tiny bit. I mean, he doesn't remember who I am, but I got to like be around in the conversation with Barry McGuire right. and people like that. Sometimes, you know, you, you run into, you run into higher, higher names, um, like Chip Foos, stuff like that, or Ken Diggett, um, people like that. You run into those type of people, but you know, for me, I'm there. I want to be there involved with everything, but I'm still on the sideline. I'm just kind of listening and listening and watching. You know, I get to, sometimes you get to shake hands and say hello, you right? Know, what exchange names, but, you know, obviously I'm not going to remember, you know, somebody as small as Randy Bunting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, the, you know, it's just the beginning of it. Sometime down the line, you're going to shake their hand again and they're going to be like, oh, you're the fucking dude that maybe. Maybe. Could happen. Yeah. You never know. But that brings me to a question here, Randy. Um, 
We're going to just dive right into it here. I mean, we're, we're talking about Riddler Awards and we're talking about custom car build and we're talking about what, what it details. You know, like, um, I mean, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to say, ask about, okay. When I've worked at a lot of shops, they say that awards are political. And by political, I mean, basically you got to kiss ass or you got to be a sponsor or whatever. And I was never involved with it deep enough to know anything about if it was political or not. But I know who I worked for and political wasn't in that guy's vocabulary or those people's vocabulary. Right. I don't foresee it in any stature fathomable that they had anything to do with handing them money. Yeah. And <clears throat> or 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 yeah, handing them money to to go ahead and, and run for presidency. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean I haven't gotten to to see that a whole lot. I know there is political Poli- there, there is politics about it. There can, there can be in certain occasions. Uh, I've seen that a few times uh, with this within the past couple of years. Uh, dealing, going to the uh, Autorama for for the Riddler Award uh, two years in a row. I've definitely seen that, and I've seen that with other shows afterwards. As far as previous Riddler Awards that were at the same show and may or may not have been promised a certain award if they show just by showing up. Well, I mean, I've, I've seen, seen that. I've seen that at car shows. Yeah, but at the same time, not to toot your own horn, but that vehicle was the nicest vehicle there, right? And, and I don't think I, I had a lot to do with, or I I was involved with a lot of the with that build. So, yeah, I saw I saw a lot happening kind of behind the scenes, and I don't think we there was a lot of politics involved with us with that. Uh, we did, however, uh, to kind of give us a little bit more mo- momentum. Uh, we actually did. Uh, pay for one of the judges to come to our shop uh, to talk, have him talk with the team, right? Yeah. Um, he he. Uh, it was like the head judge came to our shop and talked to the whole team. We we all stood around our car uh, around the car we were building, and um, he kind of went over certain things that we had to do to give us a, that extra edge. Yeah. Over over competition. competition. And we listened to him, and that's one of the reasons why we won, I think. Uh, but I don't think, other than that, there wasn't like, you know, we're, we're paying you some money to for us to gain an edge, you know? Right, right, no. <laughs> it was just for him to come to our shop and kind of exp- explain what the Riddler was all about. And we learned a lot from him. Get a better understanding, yeah. Yep. So I mean, basically, we're talking about like just the tips, yep, basically. Just tips, yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what, how else, how better to figure it out than to... Go straight to the source. I mean, and if, genius. If, if he didn't come to our shop, I don't think, <laughs> to be honest, I don't think we would have won as easily. Mm-hmm. Um, that competition that year, there was a lot of nice cars there. Uh, but from what I could see that no one went above and beyond like we did as far as, and we'll get into this a, yeah. a little later, but you know, as far as uh, fit and finish and, and that kind of things. Now, do you think... Do you think a lot of it has to do not only the car, but the scene, the show? Like when you, if you've never been to Detroit Autorama and when you come in there, it's not just the top eight cars are. No, it's full like, blown, like a full blown uh, display where half the car is taken apart as far as the brakes and you can see underneath the car and everything. Yeah. And it's not all about that. It's, they don't look at the display. Uh, they have different. They have separate awards for the display, right? Like you can win best display or whatever. Yeah, but the, the judges don't look at that. It's just that's just for the that's just for the crowd. That's just for the people. Yeah. Um, d- depending on how you set your car up, might be easier or harder for the judges to look at your car, and that makes that also plays a big part into your display. Right. Is is doing it also for the judges, not as a you're getting judged on your display, but as a making it easier for the judges to judge your car. Now, when we're talking about judging a car, we're talking about judges coming in because, if, like I said, if you've never been to the show and you haven't seen the process, if you have never seen an actual judging of a big-time car show award, um, as far as restoration goes, I have know I know of some awards that literally takes like eight hours. And just to judge the thing, like you have to have hours and hours and hours and hours of training. Yeah, they this, judge this is things. all they do too. They travel the country and that they just they there's a group of guys that just judge those big awards. That's yeah. all that's all they do. Now what do you think how long do you think it took to judge your car or a car? How about that? It's hard to say because they don't do it in one, you know, one a lot of time. They 
they so when, when you drop your car off, not drop your car off, when you bring your car in and you set it all up, um, basically that first night they start judging your car. Uh, and, and they usually do it at night when they ju- they're doing the actual judging. They do it at night when no, no crowds around, anything like that. When they come out during the day and you see them, especially, I mean, as far as the other cars in the, in the show, you know, they, yeah, they might judge during the day, you know, whatever. But for the big awards, like the grade eight and the Riddler, they judge at night. And then during the day, they do some minor judging here and there, but that's mostly just for the crowd. I was going to say, you think that's just a show piece? Yeah, that's just a, usually just a show piece. I mean, I'm sure they're finding things here and there, but yeah. um, mostly it's at night. Right. So that, I guess that answer is uh, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say an exact figure, but they... they they come and they go and they come and they go, you know, usually when they come over during the day, they spend maybe 10 minutes, not even five to 10 minutes, depending on what they're like. It also depends on your display and how much you have to get rid of for them to be able to crawl under their car. Cause I know we had a lot of mirrors, so we have to pull those out, but we designed it, not me, but my boss at the time designed it specifically so that we can pull mirrors out so they can crawl underneath. Which makes a hell of a lot of sense. When yeah, you're talking about it because I. So when you go to a show of this magnitude, as far as the award goes, you know, money brings people, and so I mean, it's ten G's, ten thousand dollars is but, the award, which is nothing. Which is nothing in, compared in the to grand millions of, of dollars. <laughs> yeah, but if you do win, you get to go down the route of you know they want the car here, there, and everywhere, and they'll actually take it in the whole nine yards or whatever to different areas. Yeah, and it's not just about shit like that. It's not just about the ten grand. It's about the recognition, obviously, because it's right one of the biggest awards in the country. Yeah, if not the biggest, but other than maybe concourse, delegates, something like that, but whatever. Well, I mean, they got some big awards. So at the same time that the Riddler's going on, there's another one with the gray cup or something like that there's going on. Yeah, the, that one in the battle of builders um right that kind of stuff but now getting back to um judging and stuff like that so if you're not aware a lot of these places like if you're trying to win awards with your vehicle um not as not as the to the magnitude of the grade eight but if you're going to some of these shows they actually give you a cheat sheet at the end Right. Yep, they do. Like um, they give you a breakdown of what they found, what they, they didn't give find. Them your, their notes and everything. Yeah. Have you seen those? Have you looked at those? Because I know everybody that I've worked for, and they didn't they they didn't win the award they were shooting for. They got butt hurt and they didn't even want it. So I've never personally seen the son of a bitch. I've never seen it either, and I, I've experienced that uh, firsthand as well. Yeah. Uh, I've literally seen like my boss go up get awards and come back and. His panties were in a bunch, and he slammed the slammed the awards into the trash. Yeah, because he didn't get what he wanted, but he, he was the same one that told me awards didn't matter. Yeah, no. I, as far as like the Riddler award goes, usually they're pretty small. Uh, if you're if you're doing it right, usually they're pretty small. But you can get some pretty. What are you talking about when you say small? What are we what like are you discussing here? Blemishes and, and, oh, okay, and okay. paint, something yeah. like that. Like I've I've seen that. Um, or like a gap was not 100% right. The last two years, I, I haven't, haven't had a chance to, pretty much not allowed to look at it. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I wanted to, just because it's part of it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That's just part of the deal. Like yeah. you get, it's you're here for criticism, and they found stuff to criticize you. So I want to. Why wouldn't you want, like if you had that at your uh, expense? I feel like it should have been like the next day. Stack up the cars, you bring them home. Monday morning should be, we're having a fucking, we're having a rally here. and We're going to talk about what we didn't do. Yeah. And that's how it goes. I've, I've seen that, you know, I've seen that is right away. As soon as you're, as soon as they're back, they're fixing it. Yeah. But as far as me not being the owner or the, you know, the name on the side of the building, I don't get to see that. You right. know, that that's just, that's just him. And but most, I think as an owner of a shop or a business, if you get critiqued like that by the head officials, the first thing I would do is come back and have a sit down with the whole crew and be like, this is what clearly what we need to be better at because we're trying to make quality, quality shit here. Well, here's the thing. Most of the time when you get that kind of stuff, you know, when you're sitting there all weekend, the car's not moving anywhere. And most of the time it's just visual things. And it's mostly something that it's the, the painter or the, like, it's something of that nature. It's that's mostly, most of the time that's what it's about. So do you think, that being said, do you think it's really 
Is it really all about the build or is it really all about the visual when it comes to awards? It's both because the car has to run and drive. Right, but we're not talking about going 55 mile an hour no, down the road. No, no, no. It, it, it is a... Has to turn left, has to turn right, has to stop under its own power, has to start under its own power, yeah. has to move forward. It has to be driven into your bay. Yes. Uh, when you drop off the... Well, you pull out of the trailer because no one's driving a grade eight Riddler car to a show. Um, unless they were cool. Unless they were cool. <laughs> but you have a lot of detailing to do, yeah. <laughs> especially in, in February. Right. In Detroit. Yeah. Salt. <laughs> salt, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Salt. Now, um, yeah, when you pull it out of the trailer, you, you drive up and get in line for the judges and you can shut it off. You don't have to let it run the whole, because you don't want to discolor the pipes or anything because it's a, it's the first time shown. It's like it's a brand new car, right. literally brand new. So you don't want, you know, you don't want your brakes looking shitty. You don't want your pipes starting to discolor. So get off the trailer, get it over there in line, and you check in. When they're ready for you, you pull up to the grade eight judges, and you just pull up, make a left, and then come back, pull up, make a right, come back. And then as long as that happens and they, they look around the car a little bit, and then once they give you the okay, then you go to your spot. Right. And that's all it takes really to, as far as driving goes, that's all it takes. Yeah. After that, it's all visual. I've been to car shows where that doesn't have the magnitude of award to it. It still has pretty pretty high standards because it's hundreds, if not a thousand cars or whatever. But I've literally been looking at a car and end up seeing the same car down the line months later at another car show. And they're like, yeah, we won that award, but that engine didn't even have the guts in it. We actually had to go get it back right. from the builder and put it all back together. And we just pulled it out of the, pulled it out, pushed it up to the wherever, <laughs> set it up, what won was the it? award. And what left. was this for? I'm not going to discuss that. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it was, you know, it was on, uh, it was during the time of being on the, on the circuit. Yeah. So we're talking about Indy, Cleveland, New York, uh, Detroit. Right. You know, things of that nature. And back in the day, I think it was uh, up until, I want to say, late 60s maybe, for the for the Riddler Award, you were allowed to, it was allowed to not run. Right. That It was until two guys, won, or one guy won it twice in a row, but he didn't have a transmission in a damn thing. I don't know what it was, something like that. He didn't yeah. have a transmission in it, so it didn't run. And then uh, after that year, they made it so that the car had to run and drive. If you're pushing for the quality of a Riddler, which in essence, any vehicle you do, if you're listening to this podcast, you should be trying to do the best quality work possible, whether it's junk, whether it's not junk. And I feel like that's what it's all about. Yeah. In, in the last couple, like at least the last two decades, it's all about performance. The thing has to perform. Yeah. And not just look good. Right. It's, it's hard to do both. It really is. It's really hard. Well, I mean, especially money-wise, you know, if, if you're spending all of the time and effort into making a damn thing look nice, I mean, and if it doesn't, if if you got the mentality of this thing's never going to be driven, it's just going to sit in somebody's shop, yeah, somebody's collection, then literally the mentality behind the build is completely different, completely different. You know, when you when you work for somebody and they tell you that it's going to be driven in a parade once a year, they don't like. That's the last people you want to be working for, <laughs> realistically. But then again, you know, you look at it that way. If if a car has to start up once a year, I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, that's asking a lot for a car mm-hmm. that sits that long, right? Because we we all know the more you drive it, the better everything works. Yeah. Uh, other than maintenance here and there, but if you let a car sit for for years, you know, everything deteriorates and dry rots and and doesn't and and seizes up. Yeah. It's like if you sit on your ass for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> Not right. doing anything. Yeah, you, you feel it when you start to yeah. get up there. <laughs> so, I mean, it, getting off of the Riddler, you know, if we're talking about winning awards, I mean, we've all been to car shows and stuff where it's not that extreme. If you're trying to go to just a local car show and you want to win your local award or whatever, um, I could see politics getting into some bullshit like that oh yeah all these small towns yeah there's politics yeah for so, sure absolutely oh yeah but if you concentrate on the vehicle itself if you concentrate on all about the build if you concentrate on the build then the awards will come 
And I've seen in the past where a car, clearly the greatest car in the entire show, doesn't win anything. Yep. And then people bitch that don't have anything to do with it. Right. And that's the last thing a car show wants is people to be bitching about the judging, especially mm-hmm. the judging, because it deteriorates the the value of the show. Especially when they give out thousands of dollars. Right. I feel like it's when you put money to it, um, you get some good quality. You get some good quality. You can make a good quality show. You know, if, if you were to try to start a local show and you were like, oh, come to my car show. Or if you did it properly and you got some donations or whatever and you were like, hey, come to my car show. You can win five grand. Right. You could do something quick as far as bringing people from all around. And not just random cars. I mean, we're talking about like higher end builds. Yeah. Semi, semi to higher end. Yeah. Doesn't have to be you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of build, but. No. But I feel like if you want to, if you want to build a car and you want to go down to your local car show and you want to win that son of a bitch and you want to be proud of what you're doing, like, you know, fit and fitment is huge. The quality of work, fit and finish. Fit and finish. That's what I meant. Fit and fitment. Fitment. <laughs> <laughs> if you're. Like we get these gains on this. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But no, we're talking like even if your gaps, if your gaps are a little bit bigger than what than what you want them to be, if they're square and straight, and all the gaps are like that, that's okay. Yeah, but if you like, if you don't at least try to clean the son of a bitch before you go there, and you bitch that you didn't win an award, I mean, come on now. Yeah, you gotta put a little effort into it. Yeah, yeah. You can't just have expectations. It's like going on a date and buying a de- buying a steak for a girl and then expecting you know. A quickie. Right. It just ain't going to fucking work out like that. <laughs> you know, actually put some effort into it. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> but I feel like uh, as far as building award winners, you know, even with paint, you know, you can you can get away with, if you want to win a paint award, that thing can be the biggest piece of shit in the world. And you can keep all the doors closed and the hoods closed and the trunks closed, put the windows up and have it down on the ground. And if you're looking for paint, then you still got to have the quality work on the paint side of things. You can polish a turd and win all the paint awards you want in the world. Right. Yeah. Because I've seen it a million times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been part of some builds that um, they put fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 into fucking body work and paint work. And the car literally squeaks and rattles and... <laughs> Yeah, the whole nine yards. Rusty underneath. Uh, it's, yeah, it's horrible. Hole, holes in the frame. Yeah, <laughs> but you came home with the number one fucking paint job on the planet. Yeah, hey, that's what. And that's that what zip code for, for that day. <laughs> and that zip code. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, depending on what award you're trying to go for, it's like even with your engineering award. It's th- if you're going for an engi- engineering award, it has to at least look like it functions. Yeah. And if it if it's engineered and it looks like it functions, then it should, unless it's like. A starter underneath the intake in a fucking Subaru or whatever, <laughs> you know, like that doesn't look like it should work. But it ain't winning no fucking awards. How about that? Yeah, the engineering behind it is is truly stupid and spectacular all at the same time. Right, as far as like trying to work on it goes. Yeah, but I mean, it has to. It has like it has to look good. You're not gonna win. You're not gonna get no engineering awards by driving it down the road and getting it all fucking dirty and then coming to a show and it is filthy. You know, you get under there and it's like, oh, I guess that's engineered all right. Even though there's salt all over the damn thing or mud or whatever, or dust. You know, I've I've been part of builds where we got docked for dust. <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't crawl underneath and clean it properly or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. But so, I mean, in your opinion, Randy, what, what do you think hours are as far as we're going to get back onto the Riddler? How many hours do you think we, yeah, we, how many hours do you think you dove into Trying to build this fucking award. Me win. personally, I have no idea. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, it's been, it was, so typically when you build a Riddler, most of the time, at least in the past, depending on who's building your car, how much money you have to finish the car, sometimes these cars go for a decade plus before it's finished. Yeah. Right? A lot of them get started and then stopped. Yeah. And, and then picked back up a couple years later, or whatever. Right. But so you, Unless if you keep track of all those, that's you know good for you. But uh, we were able to build our Riddler card in. Technically, it was like two and a half years, but then COVID hit, so it got canceled that year. So right. we had an extra year. So technically, it was I want to say only two and a half, three years. But it actually 
that could have been a good thing because you had another year in it, essence. Oh, it was, it was a good thing. We we uh, fixed a couple of because it was down to the wire. We would right. have been cutting it damn down to the day before still working on the thing. Yeah. And uh, that gave us a little bit extra time to finalize everything, you know, right. and fine tune, fine tune it. You fine tune it. Yeah. Uh, fine tune it. Um, but all said and done within those couple of years, uh, I think it was above 20,000 hours. If I remember, um, roughly, roughly, I, I don't know the off the top of my head, but it was around 20,000 hours, 20,000. That's five, five figures. Yeah. All to get com, com, like, all together with everybody, we had at one point maybe fifteen guys working on it at one time, doing something, building something. Um, whether it was uh, outsourcing machine work or just a guy, it was all hands on deck. Right, that's what I'm saying. Uh, we, and for those of you that are, are questioning what that it really is in in hourlies in weeks, it's five hundred weeks of labor per one guy. And we had it was within it was around I I. Don't take that, you know, see, literally, it was around 20,000 something hours. I don't remember exactly, but right. um, between everybody in the last, in those, I would say three years, it was around, it was upwards to that. So you, you think about it. Yeah, because you got two guys working. I mean, that's, you got two guys on one vehicle for 40 hours, it's 80 hours. That's two weeks worth of labor in one week. Yeah. To put and that's things into perspective here. Not including the overtime we put in. Right. We put a lot of overtime in. Yeah, but who gets paid time and a half in a, in a, for overtime in a hot rod shop? I don't. I don't know. It's <laughs> just throwing we, that in there. Yeah, we didn't get to do that unless it was a bigger build. You're, you know, unless it was something like what, like the Riddler Award. You know, it just had to be done. Right. Just had to get done. Right. How many hours do you think were put in that weren't even on the clock? I Talking can, about being at home, I, trying to figure out how the fuck you wanted to right. build it. Yeah, no, there was trying to figure out how to put it together. If there's anybody else that ever did anything of the sort, it, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of uh that car was engineered to the fucking sky you know it was that car was overly engineered and i <laughs> we made sure that we engineered that car to death to death yes and because uh, it was a small car you, it's hard to win with small cars nowadays because uh the, they want so much real estate and a 31 chevy is tiny especially yeah. when you chop it section it and channel it right uh that's a that's, it's a hot wheels car basically yeah and uh not i don't i, I don't want to i don't want to say it was a hot wheels car because a lot of people will look at that car and be like that's a hot wheels car but it's just the way it fucking works i don't like, like I, it's I, just the society as a whole that's how it, that's how it is that's how people look at it me personally i don't compare it to a to a hot wheels car i'd fucking want it to be a hot wheels car i, Why want, not? I, I, I want it to be a, i want it to be a hot wheels car yes but i'm but i'm saying like you hear these you hear all the you know, people like say it's ugly and well, who cares? Out. Those fucking people are the same dime a dozen that show up beside it and they're like, "This is a wrap. There ain't, there ain't no paint. Right. This is a wrap." Yeah, <laughs> let me just touch the fucking thing. Yeah, let me but, just make sure. Let me put my fingerprint on the son of a bitch. But, but anyway, yeah, you're right. All the hours that weren't spent on the clock, you know, figuring things out. There was a, I mean, that was our life for for. Two and a half, three years was that car, and that's what fucking it's all about. The build is about that's right there. Yeah, it, that was all about the build. That's it was it was all hands on deck. Like I said, it was the, you know your mentality was go home, figure out how to win this award for this customer, and get it done. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we put a lot of hours. I remember. I remember the first time, the first day hearing about you know the COVID and everything. The next day. We were like, well, who, are we going back to work? Like, what's going on here? We didn't know what was going on. So yeah, because at that point in time, especially in Pennsylvania, that was a that was a shit show up there. They yeah. just shut shit down. And yeah, they tried to put every yeah everything was Anyways. shut down. It was a ghost town driving to work every day. But that next day, which is crazy because we're talking about up towards in a city in a big city. Yeah, and for it being a ghost town, I I'll get into that in a second. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember. You know, texting my boss like, "Hey, like, what's going on?" And I don't know, remember if I texted him or called him or I talked to him at some point. And uh, he, he was like, "I'm, I'm going to be at work." He, had, I, I talked to him about going to work, and I was like, "Well, no one else is going to be there." So, and this is in the middle of building a Riddler award, a Riddler car, right? And we it was like, "What's, what do we do?" You know, we had to keep working. We yeah, had to the keep, world was closing while you guys were trying to build the fucking award. So I remember the next day, it was just me and my boss, just. Me and my boss working on this on this car, just plugging along, just getting as much you know, getting what we can done. And the next couple of days, it was kind of like that. And then slowly, you started to see 
people come back to work. Yep. And um, we've only had, there was only a couple of inc- like instances where somebody had COVID. I never had it, but uh, we, we worked like that and we wore masks and everything when, when needed. Which is good because a lot of grinding and shit goes on in the shop. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but yeah, <laughs> on on the way to work, it was no one, no one around. It was like, it was insane driving through Pittsburgh City. So you had nobody at every fucking red light begging for change? Oh, no. Really? Not no. trying to sell you fucking Percocets and shit on the corner? <laughs> nope. It was just... Either give me money or I'll sell you perks? I could, I could do like 100 miles an hour going through the city and no one's around. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm not saying that COVID was awesome, but at that time it was... No, just the fact that you had no fucking like, traffic in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is pretty Yeah, impressive. and it was like that for a while. Then I kind of got upset when everything went back to normal. Because <laughs> I think you <laughs> went to traffic again. <laughs> but no, that's that was... a. Uh, that was a weird time. So do you th- okay? So if you if you're doing the math and you had all them hours put into this thing, do you think if it wasn't for all the money coming in to build this fucking thing, do you think you could have gotten there? If you were to okay, let me. If you were to plan it differently, um, outside of ed- every plan I've ever been a part of for that shop or other shops or anything, knowing what we knew with having the judge come in and kind of like giving us a couple tips here and there. Knowing what we knew, I think we could have. It depends on how that build went because originally that car was not supposed to have twin turbos. Right. That was just supposed to be a, a big block to look like a 409, right? But halfway through the engine being built, the owner was like, hey, I want twin turbos. And we're like, well, shit, how are we going to put twin turbos on this car and make it make it look elegant, right? Right. I think the car, in my opinion, looks elegant despite, despite being a, you know, looking like a hot wheels car i think the most recent riddler awards all have some sort of elegance that's what to them. that's what the judges look for they want elegant that's the whole their whole spiel is just elegance simplicity Simpl- yes elegant i mean other than being engineered it's everything right, but has it's got to a be- look when i okay let me rephrase that when i mean simplicity i mean looks like that's the way it fucking should be yeah it's that's what the riddler ward is about it's about elegance and just that car like the car has to like put you in awe right like when you look at it and, and every and every aspect of it and if you're building vehicles period every part of the of the build should put it at an, at an awe like the the engine should hum like when an engine fires off and it sounds good and it rumbles and all that shit that's that part puts, of it yeah that's definitely part of it but i'm telling i'm saying if you're trying to win an award period whether it's down the fucking road at the local, you know, the local shack, burger shack that puts puts these on and gives you a fucking free burger. If you want to win a free burger, if you're trying to put everything into perspective, the whole build as part of this elegance that Randy's talking about, there's no reason you, I keep going back to, if you build it right, if you put the time and effort into it and you have this mentality, this is, this is how you can win awards, whether it's fucking Riddler or not. You know, if, if you're putting the effort and the, and the dedication into the build, they yeah, just, and it's a besides besides all that, it you know, when you're building anything really, unless you're purposely doing um like a rat rod or something like that, when you're building a, a high end car, it, all the proportions have to be right. All the sound has to be right, the look of it has to be right, it has to be sitting right, it has to work right. The engine bay has to make sense. Everything has to make sense. Um and when you're building a Riddler award, besides all that, all the bolts have to match. The, the rotors have to match. The tires have to match. And if you want to, we can get into a little bit of that too on, on certain things that, that we found out that helped us win. But um, I think I think what we're going to do here is we're going to turn this into a, a two-episode special here. Right. And I think we're going to get into that stuff. But we wanted to just, this episode here mainly, we wanted to just dive into this process, the beginning of the process, because this we could go on for hours and hours and hours on this shit. Yeah, and... <clears throat> We talked about in our previous episodes about planning, right? Yeah. And this is one of the biggest jobs that you have to plan for, right? Um, <laughs> to be honest, that car was kind of off the seat of our pants kind of thing. We, right. We. Um, uh, That's why I said earlier that, you know, I've been around this shop and other shops and, and well, let's not just say this shop. Let's just say shops. I've been around enough shops in my day to figure out that there's everybody's fucking winging it. And well, it, if it, they just have a plan at the beginning, if 
They just have a plan at the beginning. This yeah, is why I mean, we enunciated we, on it last week. Yeah. It's the most important, crucial part to get to this and point. And that, that's that later down the road, that kind, of, that kind of stuff saves you money, saves you time. Like I said, that, that car, the engine got rebuilt halfway through the, it being, it was basically basically built, but they had to tear it, tear it down and rebuild it for, for twin turbos for, for all the boost. Uh, but that car doesn't make much boost because I guess 409s are notorious, notorious for, um, but it was a big block anyways. It doesn't matter. But that that's the, that's what I'm talking about. Planning planning that kind of sort, sort of stuff out, that saves him money. He wanted that, so he knew what he was paying for. So he was paying, the owner was paying for the rebuild of the engine and all of the, I mean, all of the extra work. If you look at this car, we had twin turbos sitting at the bottom and, you know, Turbos are usually gravity fed, so we actually right. had to pump the oil back to the to the pan, and we had to figure all that out and do it in a way that wasn't going to be too much exposed or out of place. Yeah, I think we did it pretty well, and all the turbo lines had to run actually run through the frame, um, and they come out behind the behind the engine and go up go up into the into the scoop, so you don't see any of that right. other than the brake lines coming out of the frame to the to the calipers and the. I don't even think you even see you don't see any oil lines. From for the turbos or right. coolant lines because it's actually there's no intercooler so it's actually um, cooled by uh, coolant lines. Yeah. After <laughs> after he said I want to do twin turbos, you know that's what we had to figure out, and that was halfway through the build, and we had to basically the car the basic basic idea of the car built. You know that was like it, the car wasn't 100 percent planned, but we had a generic way we wanted this car to look. Not I'm saying we my boss it was my boss's idea because he built a car what, 10 plus, 12 plus years ago that uh, had a similar look to it. And actually, a lot of people mistake that car for that car. We They think we rebranded that car and rebuilt that car. No, we didn't. Uh, that was the idea from that car. But anyway. Right. Um, well, if it's not fixed or if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know yeah. I mean? and, and Why not try to relive a fucking good memory of 15 years ago? Right. And you know, that's why people that fucking, you know, get a divorce, they call up their fucking high school sweetheart, see what fuck she's and doing. And luckily, luckily, luckily enough for us, you know, that, that owner wanted to build a Riddler car and he was okay with, with that, doing that to, to his car, you know, doing that to his 31 Chevy. Right. What um, a selling point. This is what I've built before. Would you like it to look similar? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yes, it does look similar, but it, it's a totally different car. And we, and like I said, it, that was a, that car back then, that was a blown Hemi. Right. Um, this is a 509 big block with twin turbos. and Yeah, it, so, I mean, you know, uh, a big block and a big block. You know what I mean? Yeah, and... Sounds like you guys... Try to plan for that. That's hard when, when a customer was like, hey, I, I want this all of a sudden. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that's... I think that's how a lot that, of That changed go. the build completely, and, you know, sometimes that happens. Right. Well, I think we're going to cut this off, and like I said, we're going to turn this into a, a two-episode special here. Just because I think, you know, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg. Oh, there's so much I want to get into actually showing what it took to to make this car. Right. And the thing of it is, um, he's, this isn't just, doesn't just go for a Riddler award. Every day, this is what we do. This is what happens every day. Like even on, even on something that isn't even close to the magnitude of, of trying to win an award, every vehicle that comes into our shop, IBF Hot Rods, Huntington, Indiana, come on down. Everything is engineered in a way. Yes, everything's engineered. Every little thing is it ends up being en- engineered in a way that that most people won't even even have have a clue what they're looking at. Y- yes, because ju- that just goes for the C10 that we have. A lot of times we get vehicles that are half built, and we were just on an escapade about a gas tank the other day, and called the company that sold the gas tank. It was a horse shit. <laughs> they I was on the phone for an hour with somebody who told me that they ran two shops and they ordered parts and they've been doing this for 30 years and now they work for this company. And after an hour and 15 minutes, they told me that I'd fucking spend an extra double the double the purchase and I made a phone call directly to the company that made the tank and it took them 30 seconds to tell me what needed to fucking happen. But these, this is the process. That's just ordering the damn part. We're not even talking about the crazy shit that has to happen with engineering. Now that you got the gas tank and you have... To figure out the fact that the owner purchased external fuel pumps and shit like that, um, now you got to figure out how to make everything work. Yeah, isn't that the process? For, isn't that what we're sitting in on that sixty-seven right now? Because Randy's the one working on it, not me. Sixty-eight. I'm, sixty-eight. Yeah. But yeah, he ordered a fuel injection system that comes with a fuel pump and everything. That's fine. The fuel tank that he was using um, had a side fill, and they cha- he changes. 
I guess they changed at some point between the old shop and us, it, it, they changed their mind about the tail light fill. So you have to account for the different fill location when we're because we're changing tanks because there's no room to make that work. I mean, we can make it work. But We'd have to cut into the damn frame to make it work. <laughs> the f- the filling fuel filling process would not be correct. Um, he would get a lot of blow blowback, and so that that's the kind of shit you have to look into. But engineering that to get it to work properly, that's what we're talking about. Just engineering in general. That you know, it's just ridiculous. But on that note, like I said, stay tuned for next week. We're gonna finish off this conversation about building Riddler awards and winning winning award winning vehicles. Um, we're gonna get into some serious detail here and, and give you a perspective and make your fucking head hurt just by <laughs> yeah. all the bullshit. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, we're gonna overwhelm you is what our plan is because if you want to build award winning hot rods, you you need to be overwhelmed. Because that's what it takes, man. And next episode, you're going to find out what it takes to build a Riddler Award. Yeah, even even if it isn't a Riddler Award, we're talking about we're talking about building fucking hot rods, right? And we're talking about building award winning hot rods. Yeah, because that's what we're shooting for is building award winning hot rods. Don't don't get me wrong, we're shooting for to make everything run and drive and everything like that and make it amazing. But like Randy said earlier, part of this is the display. Part of this is the car show. Part of this is going and showing people what the fuck you built. You know, not putting it in some... It's a whole event. Yeah, it's a whole event. And it's all about the build, man. And next week, stay tuned. We're going to... It might go into three episodes. Who knows? But we're going to go into a second episode here. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll see how, that, we'll see how that pans out. But until next week, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Elliot Slack. And I'm Randy. And we'll talk to you then. As always, here's to you guys. Cheers. It's all about the build. It's all about the build. Thanks for listening to this episode of It's All About the Build podcast. Please comment and let us know your thoughts. Subscribe to the channel to follow along. And if you haven't already, check out our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok to keep up with what we have going on every week. Thank you all for listening.